Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. So we're starting front page review with The Nation. Major headline, Tinubu writes Senate on ECOWAS plan against Niger. Um, elevator accident, panel submit report today. How Obaseki has been humiliating me by a do deputy governor. Kiyamu, Ban Kure nominated as uh, ministers as Shetty is dropped. Forensic audit of CBN underway. Tinubu tells World Bank president, says the civil service payroll is under scrutiny. So what story are we taking from the nation this Saturday? So uh, I would like to start with the story that says how Obaseki has been humiliating me by Edo deputy governor. Apparently there's a cold war between the governor of Edo State and his deputy. And this is stemming from the intentions of the deputy governor to uh, run for the governorship sits in, I think, in 2024, after mm -hmm. Obaseki um, steps down. So um, he said that the governor has been humiliating him and he has taken the matter to, to court because there were plans to actually impeach him. But then the court has you know, halted um, that decision. He said that um, he has not been involved in key meetings and he wow. was locked outside the governor's house when they went for a meeting he called the governor eight times and he did not pick up he said that uh, the governor claims that he's dining with his enemies but in the defense of the governor some undisclosed uh, sources are saying that the deputy governor allegedly wants to force the governor to hand over to him just like you know he was also you know supported by the previous governor of mm -hmm. edo states that's uh, Adams uh, Oshiamale, exactly. So, and the governor is saying, no, we cannot keep handing down. We need to, you know, rotate it from one local government to the other. So, that case is brewing, and we'll just have to see to see how that governors unfolds. are not always comfortable with their deputies taking over to become the governor. I don't know. I really don't understand. Who has the story about the elevator update on the I elevator? Don't. Yes. So, I have the story accident. that says elevator accident. Panel submits report today. So we realized that in the course of the week, an elevator accident happened in a general hospital in Lagos, Nigeria. And following up on that conversation, a statement issued by the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Information and Strategy, Mr. Olumide Shogunle, yesterday disclosed that the lift installer had been handed over to the police for questioning. So that's one of the updates. So a panel was set in place to ensure that there's a detailed report on what exactly transpired and how, you know, the government can mitigate these things going forward. And so one of the things they did was to arrest, um, to hand over the, the lift installer to the police for questioning. And one of the things the statement also highlighted was that they want him to be available anytime they needed questions regarding that particular lift. And the second thing is that the report is due to be submitted today. So we do hope that going forward, we can, you know, have a meaningful conversation from this a incident. Of knowledge, at yes. least when the report comes out, there's no speculation on what went wrong anymore. We know what went wrong, and I hope the, um, the panel would also be giving the recommended penalties okay. to those they feel should be getting punished. I wanted to give updates on um, our president who sent a letter to the Red Chambers mm -hmm. to inform them about the intention to Niger. So we know that the, the, the Niger, there was a coup in Niger Republic yes. and um, the Nigerian junta has severe ties with Nigeria, the United mm -hmm. States, France, Togo. He said that they are interfering in internal matters mm -hmm. and there is a move to, um, there's a military build-up mm -hmm. and deployment of personnel military intervention was on the card. If the coupist, if the coupist um, are adamant towards ECOWAS instruction for them to step down. So right now, they are actually adamant. They are not responding to ECOWAS. They don't want anybody. to dialogue, actually. Yes, they mm -hmm. don't. And the Arewa, the Northern Senators Forum, Arewa Competitive Forum, yeah. all of them are saying that the conversation, they don't want um, military move, that mm -hmm. they don't want a military intervention, that they should soft pedal on it. Even the former PDP deputy national chairman, um, Chief Olabode George, was saying that Nigeria has enough crisis. Niger, having to deal with Niger Republic's issues at this point is a distraction that Nigeria as a country 
cannot afford, mm, especially support. since we have already shut our borders to Naime. So there is a level of they cannot get in per se directly. And so we might just do like we're not seeing them so that we can take care of ourselves. I'm sort of tempted to follow mm. that same line. Like, but, let's just mm -hmm, be doing mm -hmm. uh, word of mouth threats and maybe economical threats. But having a military invasion is not a financial invasion. It could also be move. a trap. I think the yes. concern is yeah. about our yeah. porous borders mm -hmm. with Niger from the north mm -hmm. because it's, it's very porous. Yeah, let's move so, on. Yeah. Okay. So, we, can, so, we can move on. Oh, yeah, you have a story. Yes, okay. of course. So I was going to take uh, Keamo Bunkure nominate, nominated yeah. as ministers. Um, and then Shetty dropped. So, mm -hmm. of course, we know that um, the immediate past Minister of State for Labour, Mr. Festus Kiamo, uh, SAN, mm -hmm. is on his way back into the federal cabinet. Mm -hmm. And um, also nominated yesterday for screening and confirmation as minister was Dr. Maria Mahmoud Bunkure from Kano State. So, uh, Mahmoud replaced Dr. Miriam Shetty whose nomination was withdrawn, As in, no reason was given for dropping wow. Shetty, Very, who yeah, is was, also mm -hmm. from Kano State. Mm -hmm. um, she had arrived in the National Assembly complex yesterday, ready for her screening, only to learn her fate. If she was shocked by the information, she did not quite show it. it. But of course, she of took to... It was quite, it was quite embarrassing, embarrassing. Mm. You know, for her to actually arrive at the Senate building, only to find out that she had been replaced. Mm -hmm. And then when she was... Um, nominated there were a lot of opera yeah, in the north and yeah, she's a tiktoker and this mm. one this one the is slim mama is, this one if she, she was given the position she's not married she would actually be yeah, the youngest exactly. minister would have ever mm. had because she's 33. Mm -hmm. no, i read somewhere that amazing. she's 44. Ah, no, no. i read Let's another move on profile. to saturday pop <laughs> <laughs> you know i'll just take the headlines we're going to break them we come and establish the story after of course, yeah. the bloated structure to enable new governors to get 48 ministers 560 commissioners President makes history with ministerial nominees and 20 essays. The Lagos Hospital Killer, we've taken that story already. Anthrax, cattle sellers, butchers lament as chef's family cut down on beef. Tunubu plans to probe civil service payroll. Um, I won't be single for life. Mm. That's someone that. That's a very interesting entertainment story. Niger, federal government has shut down the um, border and then the northern senators are faulting military action. I've taken that also. Jollof rice powdered yam helping falcons <laughs> at World mm, Cup. Mm, That's from mm -hmm. Striker Kano. We'll take a break now. When we return, we'll find out how jollof rice and powdered yam is helping the falcons. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back. So what story do we have in Saturday Punch? Punch, I have the... Founded Yam, Egusi helping you know, Falcons to succeed. Actually, that headline was um, quite <laughs> sensational because it was, <laughs> it was an interview with uh, one of the um, strikers. Yes. Yeah, and then she actually spoke about their win against Australia and how she felt mm -hmm. about um, scoring that goal because she had you know, planned that if she ever scored a goal in this tournament, she will go crazy. So she was quite excited. Yeah. And then she spoke about um, things that actually motivate the Falcons, you know, to do well. They sing a lot. They have this synergy. And um, she also spoke about her upbringing, how her dad did not really support her uh, sporting um, career, but her mom did because her mom also played for Nigeria at some point. And she highlighted the need to encourage girls, you know, to choose sports you know, as a career. But bringing it down to the headline now, she only said that they have a woman that prepares their Nigerian dishes for them. Which is an Which, inspiration. Yes, yeah, it is also an inspiration. Actually, And I can relate to that because when you travel abroad, when you do not have that I love you, taste, people, Dan. I beg you. <laughs> when you do not have That's that taste husband. of the Nigerian you know what you food. You've been looking for. You can find Nigerian no, food. No, the way you will feel when you don't have it after some When you are in Rome, some days, Rome, but no, I'm happy no, 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 that... No, no. When you have bread... You need to get that woman's that. name so that we can <laughs> praise the woman. You have your story. Yes, so I have the story on the anthrax. Right. And the recent spread of anthrax, a killer disease for animals in some states, has not only scared some consumers, it has also left a sour taste in the mouth of cow sellers, meat suppliers and chefs. The article goes on to say by um, a meat supplier, her name is Bukola Jai, she mentioned that anthrax disease has not only affected the supply of cow meat, but also goat and ram, considering that it affected domestic hoofed animals such as cows, rams, and goats, she stated. 
And then she also went on to highlight the fact that she's encouraged by the fact that people are aware, although there's a decline in her sales, but people are aware of this disease. And one of the things she also highlighted was that it means that the government paid a lot of attention in disseminating this information, mm. which she give, gave kudos to the government for yes. doing. Yes, so that was basically the article. And even in my house, too, I think the consumption of those kind of meals has dropped also. Well, I've not even bought anything in the past two weeks since I heard about the outbreak of anthrax. I didn't buy, and then I told my husband, who tends to eat out, that, see, we need to cut down on meat eating outside so that you know what you're eating. You know what you're eating inside, but who knows what the person you're shopping from mm -hmm. outside mm -hmm. is getting their meat from. One yes. thing the article also went on to say was that the consumption of any of these products, even the people who work with eyes and skin, who are not even working on the skin for the purpose of consumption, Should are at careful. the risk of anthrax mm. if the skin came from a dead animal. That has mm. anthrax. Yes. Baby lawyer. Okay. So yes, of course, I know that um, this has been going on for a bit and we've seen the videos all over the place. But of course, um, don't leave your marriage over tough times. Pete Edochi <laughs> said that. Uh, Interesting. Uh, yes, it is. And of course... Uh, Veteran actor Peter Duchi has expressed concerns over the rate of divorce in Nollywood. Uh, speaking in an interview with uh, media personality Chude, the, he said, if you come to our industry today, most of our girls who got married two to three years ago have all left their husbands. Uh, I was shocked to hear that Chioma Chukuka had also left her marriage. That's as, yes, actually, she has. That divorce was finalized last year, uh, as well as Iriti Doyle and Tone Todike. Uh, one takes a vow when one wants to get married, and it is for better and for worse, mm. not for better for us. One will always think it is greener on the other side. So you taste it. That is the mistake we all mm. make. So, of course, he spoke about relationship between him, Genevieve, and all of that. But I don't know. Um, Interesting. A lot is going on. I'm shocked. See, I'm really shocked. I, I don't, and I, she's one of I the few yeah. celebrities I follow. I didn't know she was But she doesn't post, I know she doesn't post Yeah, she, she's her a family. very private person. She doesn't post her family, so I just feel like that's her choice. It was finalized know. last year. Interesting. Oh. Moving on, the president has um, requested for a comprehensive forensic audit of the central bank. Um, he's also adding that there'll be a major overhaul of the entire civil service payroll. And that is to ensure that they are able to block all financial loopholes to make the country more attractive to investors. And the president mentioned this when it was um, the president of World Bank was with him on Friday mm. at the presidential villa. And I'm looking forward to, I don't, I, I'm surprised there will be any loophole still left within the payroll, but who knows? Because they've been working on that payroll over and over again, a lot of audits. We've already discovered a lot of ghost workers, but I'm ghost sure the workers. investors would be happy to hear that we're still doing more to uncover information about the payroll. Um, Saturday Sun is the next paper we're reviewing. The major headline is school wardrums over Niger. That's from the president. And I've taken that story already. Mm -hmm. Let's find something that we haven't taken. Commercial bus operators defy Songolu Oluomo's order on fare reduction. Somebody must have that story. <laughs> <Ha. laughs> Tinubu divides leadership of social cultural group. Kano's release will bring peace to Southeast. That's from a Chefo Igbo youth leader. Obaseki's rifts, we've discussed that already. Two nations, one market. Um, this is divided by political barriers. Communities in Niger and Nigeria are united by Hausa language and a market where Naira and CFA, CEFA, are legal tenders. That should be interesting. Then World Bank is backing Tinubu on fuel subsidy removal and multiple taxation killing our businesses. What are we starting with? Somebody should tell me about the commercial buses not reducing price. I don't understand. <laughs> well, I actually did not get to that paper. Okay. So I got the story on World Bank president backs Tinubu on fuel subsidy removal. So um, the World Bank president's name is Aya. Banga, and it says, during a visit to Abuja, it said Tinubu's determination to address Nigeria's challenges, including the issue of false subsidy, was commendable. He emphasized that correcting the situation was crucial to avoid an unsustainable fiscal, fiscal deficit. 
Banga expressed confidence that President Tinubu's efforts would set Nigeria on a path towards a prosperous future and position the country as an African champion. Yes, even though there's still, you know, hard feelings about the fact that the subsidy was removed, would hear experts say that this was or this is in the good of Nigeria in the long run. We really hope that the good days will come really soon because Nigerians are not finding it funny. But from the World Bank president, he says that what the president did, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, what he did was a good thing. All right, so the commercial drivers in Lagos have defied the order of the Lagos State Governor, Babajide Sowolu, and the Lagos State Parks and Garage uh, Management Committee. That's the chairman of that particular committee, Alaji Musiliu Akisoya, popularly called MC Uluomo. Um, they were meant to reduce transportation by 25%. This was supposed to start from the 3rd of August. It didn't. The effort was put out to cushion the hardship that mm -hmm. Nigerians have been facing, especially Lagosians, because we already have a 50% reduction on the government-owned commercial buses, and mm -hmm. the expectation was that there will be a correlating 25% reduction on um, individual privately owned commercial buses. Mm -hmm. But and um, um, the MC, who's the head of the association, supported it. But as at Friday, a day after the order was meant to have commenced, a trip from Iyano Iba to Iyano Paja cost 500 naira, Okutu wow. Mile 2, 500 naira, while Egmeda to Dokwemu cost two, the same 200 naira. There's no change. Wow. There was no change in the prices as, as um, uncovered by the Sun reporters who went through the story. Mm -hmm. They also, um, when the, the reporter reminded transporters mm -hmm. of the order that ah, the president, the governor has given order now, according to them, he said the governor was merely trying to calm the frayed nerves and oh. buy time to fill the protest in the state that they knew it's not possible at the current pump price. After daily mm -hmm. delivery to the owners of the buses, we must also go, must, we, we, we almost go home with nothing and they're telling us to reduce our fares. Our leaders have vehicles. They know the cost of maintenance. So for them, right from when the statement went out, they were not going to do anything. Because they, they're not because even for them it's not, it's, not, it's not practical. Yes, it's not. It's not. Yeah, I think they should just give them a voucher at different uh, motor parks where they can get um, fuel at subsidized rates so they can, in turn, reduce the cost of transportation. Because you cannot tell me to reduce my cost of operations. Mm. If you're not giving me fuel giving at a cheaper me, rate. Exactly. So you Let's need move to be able to, to subsidize it. Saturday Tribune. Mm. War looms in Niger. We've taken that story, but that's the major headline. Better days ahead, says Shetty as Tinubu drops as ministerial nominee. Um, I like the positive vibe of that comment. Yeah, but the fee I also hikes, read some way. Okay, okay. The fee hikes, um, federal government setting varsity administration against students. That's from ASU. Court halts Obaseki's move. We've taken that story. Taraba oh. House of Assembly okays governor's request to take 206 billion naira loan from four banks. Pro-democracy journalists Deserve national honor and nomination open for 2023 Obafemi Awolowo Leadership Prize. Yes, you were going to say something about the Shetty story. Yeah, I was just going to chip in when you said you liked the uh, positive. positive. Yeah, mm. I also saw on Twitter that you know there's, there's a parody account for her, so she hasn't said anything so far. Oh, but the they're parody quoting account, the wrong yeah, person. Yeah, so they're quoting the wrong person. Hmm. Yeah. All right. There's anybody have account. a story on Tribune? No. So let's move on to. Yeah. Yes, we can. You do. Yeah. Yes. So this is about. Um, it says you must obey Tinubu's directive halting fees hike. Mm. NANS tells university authorities um, the National Association of Nigerian Students has again condemned the recent increment in school fees by some federal universities in the country and the plans by others to do the same anytime from now ahead of the next academic session. The students body asks those universities which had already announced their own increment such as the University of Lagos, Unilag, Akoka, University of Abuja, Unibuja, uh, Obafemi Awolowo University, OAU, Ileife, University of Jos, University of Benin, Uniben, and of course, University of Ibado, UI. Among others, to immediately revert to the old fees while the others that are planning to do the same to shelve the idea completely. Addressing newsmen on Friday in Lagos, the National Public Relations Officer of NAN, who is also a final year student of UNILAG, like Mr. Semi Tokwegiwa, said the entire Nigerian students reject any fees hike by any public tertiary school, be it university 
or polytechnic is the, the confidence for me. <laughs> so, yes. um, as we saying that the federal government yeah. is preaching right. to say this. Thing. No, the federal um, as we saying the federal government is preaching um, students against um, the university administration mm -hmm. is similar to the way the um, public transports. Um, individually owned public transport drivers in Lagos are saying, the government is saying their own, we are so facing a different reality. So right it's there. like when we are, we are giving, or the government is giving orders, but we did not have a conversation, concrete conversation and agreement with the stakeholders before going ahead to say, this is, this what is how we are going it should be. So the governor declared his Lack own, of president declared his own, yes. and the people that are involved are saying, no, you what can't you just do that. They should agree you before know? communicating. Yes, yeah. Who knows? Because these things are serious. I have a staff who also works for me and is in Unilag. And mm. what she's saying right now is that, Ma, where increased. would the next school fees come mm. from? Mm. Right? I think these things are serious. So issues. Why is yes. increase. Increase. Lot. So let's quickly take the headlines of Vanguard. Crude oil theft. Fresh storm in Niger Delta as Navy defense vessel intercepted by Tom Polo. In other news, what fella told me that's from um, Salvador Shongo, who is the Unibo who sings in Yoruba. Enugu, extortion galore in IMT, rot in education deepens. I was raped, now I can't sit down. France based Nigerian woman cries out. Di um, Delta State APC protest nomination of Keyamo and Okotete as, as ministers. Um, elevator didn't work when commissioned. That's from the Medical Guild. <laughs> Tinubu taking steps to solve Nigeria's problem. That's from World Bank. And ministerial screening, a mere charade or a genuine process. All right, so what story are we taking here? I have um, the story of the woman that was ripped. Oh. In front. I was ripped in my anus. Now I can't sit Jeez. down normally. France woman, a France-based woman cries out. So she, th this woman is from uh, Benin, and uh, it's such a pathet pathetic story. Her Terrible. name is Ms. Ehi Nosahali Ese. Mm. And um, she says she's been traumatized, dehumanized by her boss because she failed to partake in his impunity against Nigerians because um, she is a language translator. Oh. Yeah, and um, she, they always ask her to misinterpret what Nigerians are saying. Oh, wow. so, so and she said that she could not do that because they are her fellow Nigerians, so she could not um, implicate and then them she was unjustly. subjected to that. Absolutely. But if she's then legally she there, she can... No, she took, it to, she, she, okay. it, she took it to court. Okay. She won the matter twice. Okay, she won the first time. He appealed. She won again. And then the man is now using his own personal influence to traumatize her. So he got his police friend to arrest her. The man took her to the police station. After they asked her to do what she could not do, they raped her, did all sorts of dehumanizing things to her, and then she's just crying for justice to say that, you know, these are the things that Nigerians face in Europe. It's That's so sad. That's all we can take on front page review mm -hmm. for today.